Okay, this is part two of the bones for a lab seven, and we're going to start with the metacarpals and the carpals. So, I'm not the metacarpals and the phalanges, sorry. So, the carpals come down here, there are two rows of them, proximal and distal, and then we have the metacarpals. There are five of them, okay, they're right here. And then attached or articulating with the uh, metacarpals are going to be the phalanges. And the one thing you'll notice is that the thumb only has two bones where the other digits all have three. Okay, so those are the phalanges here, the metacarpals here, and then the carpals. Okay, next we're going to take a look at the uh, supracondyloid foramen of the humerus on the cat. And in this cat we have a green piece of wire running through it. So it's right about where the end of my fingernail is there. And the supracondyloid foramen does not occur in humans, it only occurs in cats. And it is where the brachial artery and the median nerve pass through going just before they get to the elbow. Okay, next we're gonna do the radius. So I'm gonna show you a little trick on how to tell a left from a right radius. The radius is gonna be shaped like your hand. So if you look at your hand, you're con uh, concave on this side and convex on this side. Posterior side is convex, anterior side is concave. The radius is the same way. So the anterior side is concave, posterior side is convex. We have a styloid process. Styloid process is going to point to the thumb. So this is the anterior side, and that points to the thumb. So this is going to be a right radius. Okay. We have the neck. The neck of the radius is up here where it constricts a little bit. And then we have the bicipital tuberosity. Bicipital tuberosity is right here. Sometimes it's called the radial tuberosity. This is where one of the heads of the biceps brachii attaches. We styloid process, I already pointed out to you. And then we have the ulnar notch. And the ulnar notch is on the medial side of the distal end of the radius, and that's where the head of the ulna goes. So the ulna fits right up against it, right like my finger would be there. This is a right radius. Next we're going to take a look at the scapula. Now we've done the scapula before, but it never hurts to review. So this scapula is in the anatomical position pretty much, and you're, so you're looking at it from the posterior side. So if it's the posterior side, this is the glenoid cavity, and the glenoid cavity is going to be on the lateral side. So that means that this must be a right scapula. And on the scapula we have the acromion process. So the acromion process is right here. And you want to make sure and not call it the acromion. You want to make sure and call it the acromion process. We have the coracoid process. And the coracoid process is going to look like woodstock. Supposedly it looks like a crow's beak, but I think it looks more like woodstock. And we have the glenoid cavity, which we already did, right here. We have the infraglenoid tubercle. Now, this is the infraglenoid tubercle right where my fingernail is touching, and that's important because one of the heads of the triceps brachii attaches there. We have the infraspinous fossa. Infraspinous fossa is inferior to the spine of the scapula. That's where infraspinatus attaches. We have the metachromium process. That's going to be cat only, so I'll show you that quickly. We'll get this cat back over. So here is the metachromium process. And humans don't have that except for four humans. The four humans that have a metachromium process are Halle Berry, Michelle Pfeiffer, Eartha Kitt, and Julie Newmar. And they have a metachromium process because they are Catwoman. Catwoman. Oh my god. Okay, then we have the spine of the scapula, which is here. We have the subscapular fossa, which is on the deep side right here, and that's where the subscapularis attaches. Superglenoid tubercle is going to be above the glenoid cavity, it's right there, and that's where one of the head of the biceps brachii attaches. The suprascapular notch is right here, and this is important in this lab because the suprascapular notch is where the suprascapular artery and the suprascapular nerve pass through into the supraspinatus muscle. We have the supraspinous fossa. Supraspinous fossa is right here, and that's where supraspinatus attaches. Okay.